Hey guys, welcome in and thanks for joining us for episode 8 of Whiskey Flicks. Today my brothers and I will be discussing game night while sipping some bullet rye. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Cheers. I wish I could do that at work. I wish someone, I wish someone would start talking to me. And I'd just be like, nice to see you. <laughs> we don't have to do this. We don't need to have this conversation. How was your weekend? Good. Mine was fine. Nice to see you. Do we assume? Do we assume he had two cases of plutonium, or did he go back and pick that one up and bring see, it to the? Wait, wait. Great question. <laughs> I assume it was Shittiest walk home ever. That's got to be one of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you just got your ass kicked, embarrassed, and school starts tomorrow in a place you've never been before. All right, guys, drinks in hand. Taylor, I'm going to throw it to you for our initial review of Bullet Rye. So Bullet Rye whiskey. For me, I think we talked about this with Suntory Toki. Um, I think it's a good entry-level rye whiskey. Kind of one note for me, I get a ton of spice. Um, I will say on the finish, I do get some sweet vanilla, um, but it just kind of hits the tongue and it's spicy um, pretty much all the way throughout for me. Kind of one note, um, <clears throat> I think it would be fun to do a bullet bourbon and a bullet rye side by side because I think those are your two sort of quintessential, this is what a bourbon should taste like, this is what a rye is going to taste like. Um, it's just that entry level, it's that entry level whiskey for me. Uh, it doesn't blow me away. However, I think it's like, uh, we sort of coined over the, the last week. It's, it's a wicked easy sip of dude. Um, <laughs> it's, it's good. It doesn't blow me away. One note, I, I, nothing, nothing to write home about. Um, I agree. Uh, I get I do get the spice. It's pretty clear that I mean that's it's there. Uh, but after that, I got uh, which unfortunately no one got, got to see. I had a hint of vanilla in one sip, and I was super pumped about it because it's like the first time I ever. Yeah, no vanilla. Uh, it actually, tastes something like that. Um, but I'll agree, it's good. Um, I like the finish. The finish does for me lingers quite a bit. Um, it's there, you can tell. Um, but it is pretty much just across the board, like, eh, what I was expecting, I guess. Uh, solid, not, it was good. For the audience, we have been talking for about an hour before we started this episode, so we have been drinking this. This is in my house all the time. This is my go-to. I have bullet bourbon and bullet rye in the house at all times. These are my go-tos. I drink bullet bourbon until I get bored, and I do bullet rye to spice up my life. <laughs> this rye... It's not a bad life. This rye is awesome. I love... For the price point, I think it is amazing. 95% rye bill, which is crazy. Um you need to do at least over 50% or 50% or above to have it be a rye. They go nuts and do 95, a little bit of malted barley, a little bit of corn. Um, super tasty. I'll, initially, before <laughs> we started, you know, just drinking the drink, there is a ton of anise, uh, a ton of mulled spices, cinnamon, um, all those kind of like dark column fall pumpkin spices, if you will. Um, those are all in there. This is peppery, spicy. It is what you want to give somebody if they've never had a rye. To Taylor's point, this is an entry level. This is something that'll get people excited about trying rye and seeing what a $50 bottle may be. Um, I love it. I think it's fantastic. I think it's an amazing cocktail rye. Manhattan's, Old Fashions, this thing sings in those cocktails. So neat. Cocktail-wise, this is universal. I think it's awesome. I guess that probably speaks to the fact that I have not drank a ton of rye in my lifetime. <clears throat> um, I've had some rye, but 
not a ton. So this one for me, the 95%, I guess, just initially, it's a lot. Um, sure. I agree with you, though. I guess I didn't really put it into, like, those autumn-type spices. Um, but it's just, like, a lot up front. It's, like, right on the tongue, and it's it's spice. It's oh, yeah. spice right there. Definitely. Um, this is this is bullet rye. This is right. a rye whiskey, this, yeah. in your face rye whiskey, for sure. Uh, so to your point, like um, entry level, th that's good to know because honestly, I've never had uh, anything like this. So this is a this is over the top because obviously it's ninety five as opposed to over fifty, where it has to be to be considered a rye wh mm -hmm. whiskey. <laughs> Almost did it to myself again. <laughs> um, uh, so this is good entry level. That's good to know. I I, li I like the spice. I can't, I honestly cannot break it down, be like, oh, it's this, this, this spice. I get, it's very upfront, very, but I I like that because it's a, a good punch in the face, punch mm -hmm. in the palate for me, I guess. Like, you know exactly what's going on. Like, okay, we're drinking something. I, I like that. I like the over the top of it. Agreed. And that's why I have them both. I think eventually we're probably going to do something in the bullet bourbon. Um but just to bring it up now, Bullet Bourbon is my go-to. Come home from work, have a drink. Bullet Bourbon, smooth, really well, really well done. I just love the taste of it. But then, after drinking, you know, a few of them, it just it becomes like you guys brought up initially. One note, you're just like you find you just you're getting used to it. So Bullet Rye wakes me up. I'm like, oh yeah, all right, cool. It just give me that little punch to let me know what's going on, and then I can go back to bullet bourbon. So bullet rye is kind of like my little kick in the ass to keep drinking bullet bourbon for a while. So <laughs> I like that. That's awesome. I like that. Is, is it, is it fair to say then like, so obviously both bullets are one note. I've never had the array of bullet, like are all of their, if they have more, are all of them kind of one note? Or is that how they kind of run things? Like just like, suburban, this is a rye, this is a whatever. I don't think so. I'm going to disagree with the one note. I think that both Bullet Bourbon and Bullet Rye have a lot going on. I think that there's, okay. they each have, there, there's a bunch of stuff happening in Bullet Rye. Um, I think that Bourbon, okay, I think what they do is they do both very well. Okay. So I think that Bullet Bourbon drinks very smooth, very clean, both neat and cocktail. They kind of found that lane where they can fit in both, which is why they're so popular in bars right now. Um, Bullet Ride does the same thing. You can do it neat, you can do it in a cocktail, and it's going to be amazing. So I just think Bullet Ride gives me the that little kick in the ass to remind me that I'm having something to drink. Bullet Bourbon is so well done, in my opinion, that it just drinks clean. You get what you need, and it's super good, but after a while, you're kind of like, all right, I just need something to pick it up a little bit. Bullet Ride gives me what I need to pick it up a little bit. Sure. I think going back to what I said, now that I hear your description of bullet rye, I <clears throat> I guess I'd need to taste more ryes, mm -hmm. uh, more rye whiskeys, because <clears throat> for me, it's just spice. There's not a whole lot going on. But hearing what you said, I can pick up on some of the notes you're talking about, but it's not right there for me. Um, and I think that that just comes with tasting different rye whiskeys and just sort of experimenting with different things. So I think I can get there. Again, for a I paid twenty nine ninety nine for this bottle. I mean <laughs> Wait, how much? Twenty nine ninety nine. Oh you just so Yep. Yeah. Guess what how guess how much? Twenty seven. Yeah, I, I was gonna ninety nine. That's what I paid. All right. There you go. Nice. Finally. Jeez, it's about time. Nice right, episode. Finally, came out on top. Cross-wise, I'm done. Right. <laughs> you guys are both correct. This is rye in your face. This is the name says it. It's Bullet 95 Rye. They're showcasing rye. They're not trying to give you a lot of anything else. So here is what rye is. If you look, if you go and try new ryes or look up new ryes, when you see the grain bill, they're not going to be 95%. They're going to be balanced. Mm -hmm. You know. This is just, here's what rye is. Boom, take it. And that's okay. it. And so they do that very well, I thought. I, thought, I mean, for being something that should be overtly spicy at 95%, they kind of tame that a little bit. 
And it is, it's spicy, but it's mm-hmm. drinkable, like neat. I love it. Yeah, I, no, I totally agree with that. I've only had it. I haven't done the ice cubes because I don't have any. Um, <laughs> <because> <laughs> again, I can make them. I just don't have any. <laughs> kind of crazy. Um, but no, I've, I mean, meat, it's fun. It's, it's really nice. Yeah. How do you guys feel about the Bullet Ride bottle? Right. Mm. Dang, the bottle. Okay, I so. I love this bottle. Oh, I got a this... real one. Is yeah, I, I got a real one too. I got a real one too. I love her so much. I think she's fantastic. I want her around my house at all times. I am going to empty seven more just to put some flowers in them and make them look a little <laughs> if you sand. Put flowers in anything? I want to see the pictures. Actually, no. <laughs> correction. I want to see the actual video. I want the old GoPro and while you put flowers into a, a bottle of anything. I doubt it will ever. A raised font on glass baffles my mind. <laughs> good luck. It's a good luck. You stole mine. I I couldn't agree. It's it's like my favorite thing in the world. Every time I see it, I'm like, oh my god, they did it. <laughs> it's like it's, it's like it's the first time <laughs> they figured it out. I swear to God, every time I see <laughs> like on glass, I'm like, no way. Like we're going, we're going to Mars. We're gonna live there. Like you, they figured it out. Um, you guys are a little bit more on board for the raised glass than I than I <laughs> was initially, but it's kind of the opposite of the Basil Hayden's, where like the Basil Hayden's had like that parchment paper. It was very yes. dressed up. It wasn't a simple bottle, very tall, seven fifty size bottle. This bottle is cool. It's simple. A little label right across the side, and it fits in my cabinet, so you don't want to. Oh, I can't beat that. Height-wise is perfect. Height-wise height wise is perfect, and I like the width of it. Like Michael said, it's it's, it's a good-looking bottle. It's it's a pretty-looking bottle. All right, guys, we're going to get into a review of Bullet Rye. I'm going to go first on this one. For me, again, I have this all the time. This is my go-to. Um, I'm going to give it a solid three. It has all the spice that I need to let me know that I'm drinking something. I think the rye up front is really well done. I think, again, like we just spoke about, for being 95%, it's a, it's not overpowering. Uh, neat in cocktails. I love it in both. I think they did a great job of bridging that gap and being able to play on both sides of the fence. So I'm going to give it my solid three. PJ, what do you got? Uh, I am actually the same. Um, a solid three for me. Um because of the extremes, uh, I like that it's in your face and says like he, like like you said like it's a rye and it's a big rye. I like that. Um, so solid three, not extraordinary. It was for for me. It was very kind of cross board level. Like once you get the spice, I couldn't really get much more. It was just in my face. Um, but since it was so in my face and it was smooth and it was tasty and I like the linger of it, um, it's a solid three. Taylor? Yeah, uh, unanimous, unanimous decision. Uh, solid three for me as well. May have been a little harsh with the one note after hearing your description, Mike. But again, I think I just want to try more rye whiskey after this, uh, like I spoke to you before. And I think I gave Suntory, I'm pretty sure I gave it a solid three. Um, for an entry level, this is what you should expect, uh, flavor wise, uh, from a certain whiskey. I think it just delivers, um, and I would love to try it in a cocktail. And again, moving forward, it's going to be something that I, I continue to purchase, whether it's sitting at a bar or just a bottle to bring home. Um, so yeah, it, it checks a lot of boxes for me. Uh, and I, I think a solid three is a fair score. So, my initial thoughts of this movie, just pure fun. I love this movie for what it is. It is hilarious. I laugh hard 80% of this movie. Um, I am a huge Jason Bateman fan, so I'm on board from jump. As soon as it starts going, I'm ready to go. Um, I think some of the characters in here are absolutely hilarious. The stories. Good enough just to keep me involved, uh, but I don't need it, honestly. I just like watching Jason Bateman do his thing. So my initial thoughts are pure fun. Anybody who just wants an hour and a half of easy watching, laugh a little bit, this is for you. 
Yeah, I mean, I agree. Um, <clears throat> it is. I mean, I want to thank both of you, Michael, for suggesting this movie, and Taylor for <clears throat> suggesting Interstellar. Um, but more so, Michael, for giving <laughs> a movie that just kind of is easy to watch. Yeah. Um, it was nice to just watch a comedy. Uh, the cast is really good. I mean, a lot of, I mean, all of them are great comedic actors. I mean, they're just very spot on. No one <laughs> misses ever. Um, I'll disagree a little with you, Michael. I like the story. I think it was actually better than I expected um, for a comedy story. Like, you know, I've laughed at worse stories. Let's put it that way. <laughs> like, this one at least had a, a, a pace to it. Um, and overall, I mean, there was no dull spots. Like, everything kind of just, like, was... Even if it was, like, a kind of a, hey, here's what we're doing kind of scene, it was still a little funny things here and there i enjoyed it it's it's a funny movie it's a funny hour and a half <clears throat> so just piggybacking off of uh mike's point my last note was this is a fun movie um it's fun it's funny i found myself i had a couple of a few good really good hearty laughs at it there were just so many uh good scenes good little one-liners and mike to your point um, no, I'm not the biggest Jason Bateman fan, although I'm coming around. And like you said, Mike, this was the one movie where I watched it. And he got me so many times when I finished watching this movie. I was just like, all right, Jason Bateman's hilarious. <laughs> um, so good. Just like the, his faces he made, just like we were talking about with Vince Vaughn off, uh, off camera last week. Uh, he just has like that comedic value that he adds to a movie. And you don't notice it until he does a movie like this. But, I mean, he did. He really carried this thing. It Bruce, that's not small. That's really big. Too big? Way too big, baby. It's a bullet, not a grapefruit. Sorry. Like the, the part where they get to the doctor, the, the, like the first scene, like one of the first scenes, and <laughs> and they're talking about like his brother and his, and he's like, really, we're going to do this? I, I just jerked off over there. <laughs> Two minutes ago. I totally agree. The escalation of that conversation is fucking hilarious. I mean, where it goes. And then when she's when she's like, she's like, ah, oh, you know, I'm single. I'm going to, you know, like, is he available? And then Bateman says, we're, uh, we're all done with my semen now. <laughs> like, he's sitting there just like, you know, in front of, you know, yes, the doctor and his wife, but like, it's obvious he's the one not, not getting it done. And, like, it, it totally just spirals and goes into her being single. And he's like, all right, we're done. I'm embarrassed. And I just have to sit here while you two talk about setting you up with the brother that I has, you know, caused me torment for my entire life. Is it my, is it my fault? Of course it's my fault. <laughs> I look on your face. Eh, it's my fault. Yeah. Of course it's my fault. The, the twins <laughs> thing with the Baldwins. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, wait, who is it that they list before the Baldwins? It's, um... <laughs> who is it? Hold on. It's... <laughs> the one and Abel. I knew it was something extreme. I knew it was something extreme. They just went biblical and then the Baldwins. It's just like, what are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> it was when I was way off. I was way off. Cain and Abel. That's Baldwins. That's what. I love when he also calls her out. He's like, you're not a therapist. She's like, well, I'm a doctor. And he's like, sure. <laughs> She's like, I like to treat the whole body. He's like, here we go. And like, he just, uh, like, eh, we're done. This is one happen. of my lines in that one, and it kind of gets lost because there's a lot happening, so you're laughing through it. But when <laughs> Rachel McAdams goes, it doesn't hurt to ask. And he goes, it hurts a little. <laughs> <laughs> when she asks if, he's, if he's single. Yeah, that's so true. That initial scene... And every scene. Um, I don't know. I don't. I know I can speak for PJ on this one, but I can't speak for Michael that you haven't seen uh, Breaking Bad. But Jesse Plemons plays just like a super creep in Breaking Bad. And he just like translates that role into being not only a, like so creepy, but just hilarious. Like every time he's on screen, He's so good. He really is like a smaller role, but he crushes what he does every time. Like, oh man, he had me. Note, my note is honestly, my note is Gary is the best. He's hilarious. <laughs> <His characters laughs> I have, 
I don't have that fadeaway that. scene. That fadeaway scene with the dog. Yes. Like, it pulls back. What yeah. when they go to see him for the back there? Like he's just that's ah, so great. <laughs> Sorry. From the Sorry, first encounter where where they have Tostitos in the bag, he's like, "Oh, these these were three for one." It's like, how's that profitable for the corporation? <laughs> yes, that's a great question. <laughs> so I had the three for one. Did you notice? And I'm gonna jump. Did you notice at the end credits? The shot of his letter to Frito Lay's, where they're like, "We do not do three. Yes. <laughs> did you watch P- Taylor? Did you watch the ending? I missed it. No. You gotta I watch. Mean, I, the, you gotta watch the, the end endings. credits. The end credits. The part where like, yeah, like when they show him and Debbie getting married, and she feeds him the cake, and then he smashes it, and like the He's pictures, <laughs> his face is exactly the same. He's just like. See, it's the so only reason I know what you're talking about is because they do have – they show the one picture close up in the one scene where Jason Bateman's in his office and it has what? him not smiling while he <laughs> – That's the one they show close up in the credits. It's so insane. <laughs> that dude, I actually – so the first time I ever saw him act was in the show Friday Night Lights. Yes. Mm-hmm. No? With never Kyle Chandler. I saw him Yes. After. Which is another note I had, but yeah, uh, Jesse Clemens was a great character in Friday Night Lights. Great character, mm-hmm. and yeah, he was on. I've never seen it. What? What? Oh, he, was man, it was so good. <laughs> no, he was. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, it's just, <laughs> just, just, just guess. I don't know. Feels like a lineman to me. No, at that point, no, he was in high school, so he's like, yes. you know, what we looked like in high school. Yeah, he he was oh. good looking. Yeah, and good. And yeah. then life takes over and says, "Well, here's some stuff." Mm-hmm. Try it out. I have you know, some other plans. Well, I mean, it's <laughs> rich and look like that than us and look like that. I'm just true. Sure. One of my favorite scenes with Gary too is when they go over and they do the game. My thing. Did you see the initial shot of him when when they, it's him sitting and they just have the two guns pointed at his head? Got I that. love that scene. That is so cool. They do it multiple times after that. Like it's yep. not as pronounced as like the first one when they're like both perfectly <laughs> in shot with him but i mean they should, as soon as i saw it i was like ah that's perfect it's, <laughs> it's so really good, good. <laughs> when jason bateman goes in to <laughs> get into his computer and he's trying to figure out the password and he's like <laughs> <laughs> he puts debbie down so good <laughs> uh back to the the beginning scene when uh, Billy, or what's his uh, character's name, when he brings his new girlfriend and she puts out her hand. Sephora. <laughs> <laughs> no, different girl. Same different, girl. Yeah, that's another Jason <laughs> Bateman. Just great. Like, nope. <laughs> Wrong. Dial it back. <laughs> same voice, same look. My favorite scene, my favorite scene of that entire movie is the removal of the bullet on the car hood. Yes. So I love that entire scene. Really? I love the I got I couldn't find an alcohol, so I got this Chardonnay. <laughs> great to pivot. Great to pivot. <laughs> Such a great line. Um the corn wait, 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 chowder wait, 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 recipe. Wait, wait, wait. My favorite is before that, when they before he gets shot, when they're in the bar and they capture the bad guys. And Rachel McAdams, just like, when she puts on Third Eye Blind, oh, Simi so Charm Kind of Life, and she's <laughs> dancing around with it. <laughs> Fantastic. That is, that's probably why I'm I'm still single, is because I doubt there is, like, I want a woman who would do that. Be like, I got a gun, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Dance around, <laughs> stand in. It's real fun. Like, it's... Hilarious. She drops it. She's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Look at that gun. Takes it. <laughs> it's yeah. ridiculous. So funny. I see you that up, ponytail. <laughs> the child's pose. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's <laughs> holding the gun like he's holding a pen. I literally had that note. The way he holds the gun while he's like, oh, I don't want to use it. So funny. It's ridiculous. <laughs> So he's still weird. pointing at him, just like, yes. <laughs> but he has no way to shoot it. He's just holding it in their direction, like awkward. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> Showing him child's like- Jason Bateman slapping his ass off. <laughs> <laughs> so good. He the- he's like, we should ask the bartender for a real cocktail. 
I'll take a vodka tonic. <laughs> Great job, hon. Great job. Harvey Wallbanger, and then he, has, he walks away. See that face? He goes <laughs> after It's kind of tart. <laughs> it's great, though. It's really, it's good. Hey, um, in the bar, when Rachel McAdams comes out and does her Pulp Fiction thing. Yes. Right? So yes. she does that. I Taylor, you had brought this up, I think, in the, the initial thoughts. But you brought up Vince Vaughn's name. And mm-hmm. I think that's the one point in the film where I thought Jason Bateman stole something from Vince Vaughn. And that was the point where Rachel McAdams comes out and does her thing. And Jason Bateman's like, Pulp Fiction, he goes, we love films. Like that draw, that line mm-hmm. just made me think of Vince Vaughn. The way that he delivered it, the way it was put out there, when he just sure. said, we love films. Like that's just something I hear Vince Vaughn saying all the time. See, this is one of those movies where... Don't get me wrong, I think Jason Bateman crushed it, but if Vince Vaughn was Jason Bateman's character, I think it would have been just as good, right? I think that both their deliveries in their jokes are so similar, I think it I think it could have been pretty seamless. That's a okay. tough one for me, man. I don't I know. Think it could have been. I think it could have been. I think Vince Vaughn is a lot of I think Vince Vaughn's a lot of facial expressions too, though. I think he's more right, you're right. He's more, what's that word? I don't know what it is, but he's more of that than Jason Bateman is. I think Jason Bateman is dry humor, quick, sarcastic, done. In and out. Boom, boom, boom. Whereas Vince Vaughn is not only dry and sarcastic. I think he one-ups Jason Bateman because he has that. You know, when you hear a line at this point, you know what Vince Vaughn's face is going to be. Sure. Yeah, Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, you're right. He You're has right. that going on. Like, he has both sides of that whole thing. Sure. When somebody says something outlandish, you know you're going to cut back to Vince Vaughn's butt. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, you're right. You're right. True. True. Right. If you had to play it the way Bateman did, mm-hmm. Bateman is better than... Uh, Agreed. Oh, God. Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. Vaughn. Yep. If Vince Vaughn can go a little more, it's a different movie. I Correct. Think. Sure. It's a different yeah. movie. But if, if, I don't think it would be funnier, but it would be as funny if he could do his thing. But if he had yeah. to, if he was confined to what Jason Bateman did, no way. No way. Jason yeah, Bateman that's a, all right. That's a fair point to make from both of you. All right, yeah. I think I think you didn't know where I was going with that, and you were a little little uh, suspect that I could pull it together, but I did. I pulled it together. Made a and once thing. you did, you I totally agreed. agreed. You can suck it. I saw your face. <laughs> I know what I'm saying every time I say it. <laughs> like the, the 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 portion of the film where he's driving the car and they're gonna take out the front wheels of the plane. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think when he misses initially, I think Vince Vaughn in that seat, that scene is totally different. Absolutely. Instead of yeah, so Jason right. Jason Bateman sells it by saying, "Thanks, honey." Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. He does. He does. Mm-hmm. He does. Because hilarious. that's him. Yes. Vince Vaughn's sale is completely different, yeah. and he doesn't need to say words. Yeah, you just know what he's thinking. You're like, Maybe one uh, of these, like yeah. Also, does Vince Vaughn fit in a Corvette Stingray? <laughs> also, zero chance that if we were doing it, if you go to take out those front wheels, they don't come off like that. Absolutely it in the nose of the plane, part of the car, <laughs> broken neck. Life over. Done. No, see, I feel I feel that's more of a you drive it to the front, um, the front uh, we, uh, wheel, and you sure. dive out and hope the, for the best. You don't swing. That, that doesn't. No, matter. definitely that's don't swing really, into it. You go straight, and then you both jump out and let the car go and hope that it just does what it has to. No. Yeah. When they said it, it yeah, I yeah. thought zero chance this works. No, but I, it's a comedy, so it should. Of course, yeah. I mean, it just chips away perfectly. Everyone's mm-hmm. fun. Fun fact, you guys know that those, the the couple in the beginning before she meets Jason Bateman, that fat kid is the guy in Spotlight. I'm sorry, what? So the fat guy that she's hanging out with and drinking beers with and she says, this is not a game. He says, that's legitimately what it is. Mm -hmm. That guy is the fat kid in Spotlight who actually breaks the story to Rachel McAdams in Spotlight. Yeah, I missed that one. 
Nope, definitely not. She, well, yeah, he's the one. Step. He's the one that walks with her by the church. No, I know says, the scene you're talking no about. No way. Yes, no sir. Way Absolutely, yeah. Yes, sir. Same guy. Spotlight. That's how they met. So, all right. What do you got? Yep. Same guy. Really? Yes, sir. Confirmed. As soon as his I name saw is him. Michael. Uh, I never had I know how to pronounce this name. Uh, C y r i l Cyril. Oh wow! It's That's Michael cool. Cyril Creighton. It is his okay. name. He's an actor, writer, director. Spotlight. He is Joe Crowley, who is the guy who sits down with yep. Rachel McAdams, and he's Bill in Game Night. Let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. Taylor, what's your review on Game Night? So it, this one was a tough one because this was, funny enough, the first comedy that we've done on a comedy podcast um, eight weeks in. Uh, so we, we definitely took some time with it. Um, so it was tough for me to develop a review that was fair to the other great movies we've done. Um, comedies are obviously going to be a little tougher to review than like a Shawshank or a Karate Kid. Um so I'm taking all that biased out, um, and I will say this is a strong three star for me for a comedy, and it's it's going to be an easy rewatch for sure. Um, this is going to be something like if you just want you know if you're hanging out, you just want something fun to watch. This is the movie to go to. Um, there's a lot of good laughs in there. Uh, great cast, great script, great everything. I. I can't really fault it, but I don't want to go too crazy with the comedy, so I give it a strong three star. Um, this was a fun movie for me. I agree. I totally agree. I'm going to give it a strong three. Uh, I was hedging towards a four, but a four seems a little bit drastic. I can watch it again once we hang up. It's sure. just, it's, yeah. it's going to give me what I need for the hour and 40 minutes that it runs. It's an easy so, one. Yeah. It's perfect. Jason Bateman is just sick. The cast is amazing. Everybody, as we spoke about, they definitely give him what he needs to excel in this movie, and he does so. Um, so I'm going to give it a very solid three. Um, that's it. That's all I got. It's just a solid three. I love it. It's awesome. All right. Um, no, to both of you. It's a strong... To solid two. Ah, oh, see, it's see, it's it's not it's not a three. I'll I'll, it I'll, is. I'll I'll push it to a soft three. I'll give you a soft three. I'll give a soft three for caving. Because, you know, I cave a little. I'll cave a little. <laughs> I'll let uh, you explain, but I'm gonna I'm gonna blast it's just, you. Afterwards. It's it's a it's a run of the mill comedy. I don't have to explain it. Like you're not like it's not. Well, to, to your point, Taylor, like comedies are, it's very delicate because you're comparing it to like legit, like if we're all keeping it the same, right? We're comparing mm -hmm. it to over the top movies that are fives, like awesomeness. It's not there. And it's not even like an all time comedy. It's not. Uh, I mean, I would put like a Caddyshack or like I put those at fours. Like, I mean, I'm not sure. going to put those at five. So, I mean, I can't, I can't put it at three. Um, not to say like a Caddyshack is in a five comedy, just as an example. I mean, for just going. So it's a strong two. It's right there. It's funny. I will watch it again. If it comes on TV, I will. I won't watch it all the way through, but I'll definitely flip back. I'll catch scenes of it. It's good. The cast is great, which is why I give it such a high mark. The cast is perfect, uh, to be honest. They were great. No, no one misses. It's just, it, they're they're all good. They all serve their purpose. But I mean, it's 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 nowhere near that level of a comedy. It's it's a strong two, soft three. Yeah, all right, guys, that's gonna do it for us. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please join us next week when we discuss Days and Confused while drinking Wild Turkey Long Branch whiskey. Until then, cheers. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.